but he's going to be talking about why you need to vote on Thursday. Welcome to today's vlog. We have broken the 3,000 barrier. Thank you all so much. Lucy from Belfast. Sorry, that was a terrible accent from Belfast. Um, you are my 3,000 subscriber, Lucy. You are going to get these two free signed CDs. I've just sent you a message. Make sure you send me a message back. Well, thank you to all of you. I love all of you. There are going to be more subscriber-only giveaways coming up very, very soon. Today is a kind of different vlog. I am going to be talking about this campaign that YouTube are talking about called Power to Decide. I've got a very special guest on the vlog coming hopefully very soon, but I just wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping for the vlog. Apologies for last night. I said I would stream on YouTube. We tried to set it up. Those of you who watched it, I think I've probably deleted the videos now, and the YouTube um, app was just completely screwed. Basically, everything was on uh, landscape mode because of the way the phone has to work and the way the tripod works. And every time I tried to do it, it just kept locking the orientation. It was really doing my head in. Obviously, I was, as I've said before, when I'm on a gig, I want to concentrate on making music, especially when I'm playing with somebody like Bobby, who is such a good saxophone player. I kind of need to be on my toes, otherwise he's going to wax me. And it was just been a right pain. Then I eventually got this. So I I think I said to you, let's put it on Facebook. So it's on Facebook here. And then the second set, I thought, right, I'll get it on YouTube. So I got it and I got it all set up on YouTube and I forgot to put it on public. <laughs> Sorry guys, but I know for next time. So hopefully next time I have a gig, which is relatively soon, I will stream it live to the YouTube channel for you guys. So you can all get to watch it. Today I have the kids at home. It's last year I took Amy to Westminster Abbey on this Monday. It's kind of a weird Monday. My wife's teacher, she has to go back to school today, but my kids are off. So I need to be at home with them last, well, I need to be with them. Last year I took Amy around Westminster Abbey uh, and we had a great day. Um, today the weather is very, very different and I've got both of them at home, but we went and played crazy golf in Stevenage in an indoor thing. Wait. Crazy golf! <laughs> oh, nearly. Yeah. I might want to go a little bit tighter. Not much tighter than that. That's good. God, we look cooler just in the shot. I know the light. Why you good. set that all up with the light? The light is very good in here. Yeah. Isn't it? There Beautiful. you go. You see. <laughs> so this is Dan. So it's like the two Dan shows. Not quite that bad. But Hello. Dan is standing to be an MP in uh, this constituency where I live, which is South Cambridgeshire. Uh, Dan stood last time as well two years ago. He's a glutton for punishment. But Dan, <laughs> why, why does a guy like you want to be an MP? Yeah, great question. Um, I'm just getting really sick of what's been happening the last few years. Um, if you look at it in society generally, you know, things are getting harder for people and I don't want my daughter growing up in a world where she hasn't got the same opportunities that my parents had. But, but what, what is it? Why, why can't you affect change some, some, uh, you know, by launching a YouTube channel or something? Well, the fact is, yeah, yeah, you, you can affect change that way, of course you can. But the difference is, in Parliament, you have the opportunity to actually represent people's views and change the law. And if you think about, you know, things like tuition fees, Having that change would make a massive difference to people's lives, and it's about making the difference that counts. Change only happens when people show up, yeah. and that's what it's all about. There's a lot being said, um, especially last year on the EU referendum, and I, I made stuff about it, and people and Trump and all those kind of things um, about you know, kind of politics now is really divided, um, and I just kind of wondered. You know, for a lot of people who maybe watch the channel are quite disenfranchised with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, you know, which is kind of why I was asking that question in a way. I mean, a lot of people find politicians to be out of touch, not understand what's going on. Um, so so what, how, how are you going to change that? Well, what's can I just difference? say, last year was interesting. The number of young people voting was higher than we've seen before. And I think there's a lot of people who are really fed up knowing that their vote probably didn't really count because the older people made the decision for them. And equally, people who are under 18 last year um, they, a lot of those people can now vote now, which is fantastically Ooh. different. I'd say, you know what, you only change politics by getting involved, so go to your local party. It doesn't matter actually what party you belong to, but if you have a cause, if you have an idea, go to your party, get involved, and it's only from normal people standing in elections we're going to get a change in the way that we have Parliament. So how long have you been involved in politics? 
Well, actually, it's interesting because when I was a kid, I used to go out with my dad leafleting and stuff, and then I left it behind. I then went to work abroad in a refugee camp, and I saw for myself injustice in the world. I worked in a homeless shelter in London as well, and I just thought, what is happening to our society where these sorts of injustices are allowed to happen? And then when Labour lost power, I just thought, my word. I, I suddenly realised the difference in the different political parties, and so I decided to join the Labour Party, get involved, and it's been really brilliant. And all I'd say is, you meet like-minded people who, just like you, want to make a difference in the world. Mm. What's the kind of things that kind of tie you together with the other candidates, rather than what, what kind of divides you from them? Yeah, one thing I'd say, okay, so of course we had some, some awful things happen in the country the last few weeks. Um, and what's, what's really great, I think, is when we stand up there, there are two men and two women. And in particular, the people who have been attacking this country do not want to have women represented. Women, sh we're proud to have the vote in this country. Women should get involved. But the interesting thing is, I like and respect every single person up there. Our views and our opinions differ slightly, but actually when it comes to this kind of ideology we're facing at the moment, it's about democracy, and this is our right and it's our privilege. And that's Ooh. what all parties stand for, which Ooh. is the name of the game. Yeah, I know you've been out like um, in the Middle East and worked with young people on both sides, both the kind of Israeli and Palestinian sides. What were the things that you did when you were out there that kind of helped build relationships between those people? What were well, the I'll tell you a story actually. So this one time I remember I spoke to this young lad who was, um, he was, he was actually outside the refugee camp, but he was from a very poor family. And he said once he hates the people in the green uh, outfits. And he meant of course, the soldiers. He said, I hate them, I hate Israelis. And then, he, and then he started talking a bit more and it turned out his neighbours were Israeli, as were some of his friends at school. And I said, you do know these people are Israeli too? He said, no, they're not, they're my friends. I said, yeah, exactly, that's the thing. And that kind of always stayed with me, that actually sometimes we put up barriers and we put up titles on things, but actually we're all human. And the, the whole idea of that peace programme was to try and get people talking. If you start talking, we can make a massive difference in the world. Well, one of the things that, that scares me a little bit is, is the lack of knowledge of some of the people in power about kind of um, talking about regular, like Theresa May yesterday said about regulating the internet and um, we've had Amber Rudd who was or is the Home Secretary talking about uh, just showing a complete lack of understanding about how the internet works yep. um, and that for me, I don't want to live in a Chinese style, um, no, me neither. you know, kind of behind a firewall where I can't access things. I mean my parents are in Turkey at the moment, you can't access Wikipedia in Turkey because yeah, of the controls. Yeah. And yes there is lots and lots of vile stuff on YouTube, but I'm sure everyone who's watching this will agree there's lots and lots of good things on YouTube. I oh, mean, fantastic, we yeah. couldn't do this, we couldn't have done this 15 years ago, yeah, there was yeah. kind of no YouTube, yeah. no way, and the fact is today... You can't, so, you can't now. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and there are so many people who are watching this who can get inspired, who can make their own videos, make their own vlogs, upload them, and this, I think, for me, it scares them, hmm. because, you know, it, the power has gone away from from the, uh, from their own base, and the, they need to. And actually, the power is with us now. Yep. And can I just say, civil society is a huge part of what we're in right now, which people don't they kind of ignore. I think. So I'm part of a group called the Open Rights Group, and it's a campaign group which puts pressure on the government, regardless of party, to say that our digital rights and liberties must be protected. Mm. Um, I mean, if you look at the last few years, there has been a few changes happening already and we cannot allow our digital rights to be taken away. Mm. Is it right that people can see what you do online, for instance? I think that's a massive infringement where it means we're seen as almost being guilty until being proven innocent, and mm. actual fact is the other way around. We're innocent until proven guilty. Mm. Yeah. So, summing up, why should people watching this who are in the UK, because I have people all over the world watching this, um, which is kind of, again, I've said this before on the channel, how amazing it is that so many people watch this from all sorts of works of life. Work, works? Walks? <laughs> and whether I'll edit that out, I don't know, you're done. Um, why should people come out and vote on Thursday? Right, change will only ever happen. I'm talking to you now, actually, Dan, because I'm sure you're going to vote. Yeah. Change will e only ever happen if you show up. And if you don't show up, there's no point. I spoke to a girl just the other day who said to me that she's going to a big gig type rave, a big party to celebrate if Corbyn wins this election, which I, that's her view. I also know there's a lot of people who said they want to go and download music, but actually it's about voting on the day. And that's why that's your power to decide. So make sure you turn up, make sure you vote on the, this Thursday. Yep, so remember, let's hold that up there, there we go. There go. Point to it, there we go. It's your power to decide. Both Dan and Dan tell you to get out and vote, vote. on Thursday. Don't leave it to everyone else to make the decisions for you. 
Thanks, Dan. Good Cheers, man. Cheers, Dan. Thank Cheers. you very much. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, everyone. Come on, Tim. Give me something good on my new Mac. Ooh, something's coming. So, WWDC was fantastic. I really think iOS 11 is going to be something worth waiting for. The HomePod is definitely on my Christmas list. And, yeah, loads of other stuff. Um, I'd quite like to see how good the iMac Pro is because with a lot of video stuff, this is weird. This kind of sometimes struggles to do it, whereas the MacBook Pro is kind of... It just spits it out in no time. Maybe I asked this to do too much, which is kind of, but that's that's my thing on that. The most important thing today has been this power to decide. Wherever you are, especially if you're in the UK though, you have the power to decide your future on Thursday by turning up and voting. It really is important that you get out and vote. Whichever party you vote for, get out and vote. Even if you have to spoil your ballot paper. I'd rather you didn't, but you need to get out and vote. It's really important. So you have the power to decide. If you don't get out, you haven't got the right to kind of whinge and moan about it. Anyway, that is all for today. It's been a bit different. Tomorrow I'll be back with a saxophone vlog. And then it's going to be a little break until the weekend when I'll be back as we lead up to my 200th vlog. Thank you very much for watching. Please do hit that subscribe button if you can. It would be amazing to get to 5,000 subscribers over the summer. And I will think of an amazing prize for the 5,000 subscriber. Thank you very much for watching. See you very, very, very soon.